Hi everyone, and welcome to another tutorial in the TaskGen tutorial series. So TaskGen is an agentic framework that I created that breaks down a task into subtasks to pass it to functions or inner agents. And today we'll be covering tutorial two, chat variables and global context. So this is actually one of the most important tutorials for TaskGen, because I believe that for an agent to perform well, knowledge sharing is very important and not just sharing all knowledge. You need to share knowledge in a very contrived manner, in a way that only the knowledge that is needed to be shared will be shared. So shared variables is actually a way to store knowledge of what the processes have, have output. You can store that in shared variables. It's a dictionary that has multiple keys and values. And global context is a way to augment the prompt to an agent. And you can refer to shared variables in this global context. So it helps you to make it very selective as to what kind of content you want to put in the prompt. So let's see. First, we install TaskGen, put your API key, import the functions needed, define your LM function. This one I cover in tutorial one, so refer to that if you need. So you can check whether LM is working by just typing in your system prompt and user prompt, and it should come out with some answer here. So what shared variables? OK, so shared variables, you can basically retrieve knowledge and store knowledge when you are using any external functions. So here we have generate quotes as an external function. So you just put shared variables as the first variable okay, in your function input. And then the rest of the variables can be as needed, like number of quotes, category. And here the doc string generates number of quotes about category. Okay, So you see, you can take from the shared variables what are your existing quote lists. We use strict JSON to generate the quote okay, using the number of quotes we, we have gotten from the function and the category that we have gotten from the function input as well. Okay, you can specify the format you want here, like quote person and so on. And basically at the end, you output the quote list as output format. So this is a very good way to showcase how you can use generative AI like LM inside a function because this equip function can then be passed on to the agent and you can have the rule-based methods if you have any rule-based methods of retrieving stuff or the if else statements here, you can have a rule-based thing here. And you can have the generative portion inside the function as well. So at the end, after we generate the quotes, we just simply extend the, the list with the generated quotes. Okay, and then we can store back to shared variables. So you can see here we can manipulate the shared variables in any Python function. And that's really cool because anytime you have any output. You can put this in shared variables. It's like a common hard drive, all right? Maybe if I can just describe here. Shared variables will be like where all the data comes in. Shared variables. You have different functions. Your output one, output two, all goes into shared variables. And you can define exactly how this happens. And at the end, when you want to retrieve it to global context, which you will see later, you can retrieve certain sections of the shared variables. Okay, You can only retrieve retrieve as needed. Right, so this helps to make it very, very specific and you won't flood the LM or the agent with unnecessary information. Okay, let's go down to the next part here. So let's run this. Okay, run this function, generate quotes. Now we have an agent. The agent name is called quote generator and it generates quotes according to a category. Okay, default to LM, we set to false, which means that the agent does not have the youth that does not have the use LLM function so that it does not you know, generate quotes on its own. I want the agent to use generate quotes, this function here. Okay, we first define these shared variables. Notice this is something new that the agent has. This shared variables, we put a dictionary. The key is called quote list and the value is an empty list. Okay, and you, know, you can also put global context here. Later, we have an example to show that so that you can reference the needed shared variables. Okay, over here, we have no global context. We just use shared variables here. I just want to show you how this function can update the shared variables. Okay, so again, we assign the generate quotes here. And we run a function called generate three quotes about life. And here we have the like modified React framework. We observe that there's no subtasks that have been completed so far. So next, it thinks that, okay, I need to generate three quotes about the category of life. So it identifies its action, which is to use the equip function, num um, generate quotes, and puts in these parameters. Number of quotes, three, category, life. 
notice that there's no shared variables here, although it's here. Because back end, okay, we will interpret this and we will put in the shared variables for you inside the agent itself. So you do not need to, you, you will not see shared variables in here. In here, shared variables is a hidden thing that gets called to your function directly like that. And then you can manipulate it as you wish. So over here, we can see what is the quote list now. The quote list, you can see that we have three quotes in the format of quote and person like this. So this is really cool. Okay, now we want to continue generating three quotes about happiness. And notice I reset here because, you know, if you have too many subtasks at the back, sometimes you might confuse the large language model in fulfilling the next task. So when I do the next task, I reset the earlier task so they can focus on this. Okay, so you can see it generated three quotes on happiness. And you can see the quote list, it did not reset. Notice this, it still continued from the earlier quote list here. Okay, this means that the shared variables effectively store persistent state throughout the agent's runtime. You can even download it later and you can put it back to the agent again when you want to load it up again. So if you want to create agents that can learn from tasks or during tasks, you just store them in shared variables and it's a very good way to capture learnings and so on. In fact, if you want to you know, do some reflection and so on, and you can you can perform some LM-based reflection using strict JSON on maybe one of the tasks completed. Like maybe, maybe, okay, maybe we have all these quotes here, you can perform some reflection and you can store that reflection in a shared variable as well. So very, very flexible. Now we move on to the next most important part of task gen. In fact, this tutorial is very, very important because this is, is in fact the essence of task gen is very different from all other agentic frameworks. So this global context here allows you to update your agent with the latest state, okay, be environment state and so on. Okay, as long as you store it in shared variables, you can update the environment state to the agent. Or you know you can you can provide the environment state at every task as well. No problem. So what we can do here is, okay, there are two ways to do the global context. One is to do it as a string. And then in that string, we do everything in angle brackets for the shared variables name. And backend task gen will help you update the value of the shared variables over here. Okay, the other way is to do a get global context function, which allows you to you know, define for yourself how you want to append the global context. So I'll demonstrate both of them. So for now, what we do is we want to do a, an inventory manager. And this inventory manager, what it does is that it manages the inventory of one factory. Okay, so what we can do here is, you see you have this, this shared variables for all these functions here. You can app append it to the shared variables and you can remove the item from the shared variable. So there's two functions we define. One is add item to inventory. One is remove item from inventory. And then we have an agent inventory manager. The row is add and remove items from inventory. And you can only remove the items if they are present in the inventory. So our shared variables, we have nothing so far because at the start state, we have no inventory. And here you see global context is this string inventory dot dot angle bracket inventory. So, you know, backend task gen will update this angle bracket with the variable that you want, which is this variable here, okay, which also will be updated at runtime. So we assign the two functions to the agent and let's run it at apples and oranges. You can see that it first decides to add apples, then it adds oranges and it ends tasks. And then we can see what's in the inventory, apples and oranges. So it has persistent state stored in the shared variables. And you know, the agent is also able to know that, hey, um, there's already apples in the inventory. So this could also be found out from the subtask completed because you know, your agent has a subtask completed here that, that also mentions this. But you know, if you reset the subtask completed, the agent would also know that it has apples or oranges because of global context. Okay. So now let's uh, remove the apples. And so we we reset the agent and we remove only the apples. And you can see this is apples removed from inventory and we can see what's the inventory, oranges, nice. So now we can remove only pairs, okay, but there's no pairs in the inventory. And this, the agent knows because it's in the global context. So you can see it has some form of error mechanism. In fact, if you call the remove item from inventory, if it's not present, it wouldn't be it won't be removed as well. 
So you can also do, you see, this is an if else statement, a rule based method in the remove item from inventory. This is my proposed architecture, especially when you want to have more robustness. You should put the rules in your equip function so that you don't rely on LM for everything. But in this case, you know, the LM is able to know that, hey, pairs are not in the inventory, I cannot remove them. So let's see if you want to be a bit more specific about like what exactly happened. You can look at agent.tots. This is a new feature. You can see what are the observations, thoughts, actions, and so on for, for all the agents, uh, past actions. All right. So next, a little difficult example, but this will show you the beauty of using get global context, which is a function-based approach to give the global context. So first, this is a 2D maze navigation. The obstacles are randomly placed and the agent needs to move up, down, left, right to the goal state. It's quite difficult actually because the agent can only see the cells up, down, left, right of it. It does not see the whole grid. Okay, as, as, it explore, as, as it explores the grid, it will store memory of what he has seen and you use this for navigation. So first we generate the grid. Okay, we, we have some functions to print the grid, check whether the move is valid because you cannot get out of the, the boundaries of the grid. Uh, update the obstacles or so. If let's say, you know, you see in an obstacle, you can update it. So if the obstacle changes position, we can also update this, this uh, obstacle memory. So let's see what happens. We do have a move that takes in shared variables and an action. So this will move the agent by the action. And you know, the shared variables is there to see whether is it in the valid moves. And you know, like we can also see like what's the current position and so on from shared variables. So it's very useful that you can have this shared variables directly in your equip function. So we do some processing for the next action, update all the shared variables. All right, so get global context. What this function does here is that given the agent itself, okay, get global context, you can take in the agent. Okay, you, you should take in the agent. All right, and in this agent, you can take in all the shared variables here. So you can see from this get global context, which takes in as input variable and agent, you can do whatever you want for your global context. You can put like the current position, exit position, last 10 visited states, known obstacle position, next valid moves, and so on. You can even specify your own way of, you know, um, telling it how to do the plan. Like for example, to navigate to one one, you should move down, move right, you know, give some examples about, you know, what kind of plan it should do, right? So at the end, it will return a string and this string will be updated to the agent's prompt. So this is a bit more lengthy than the, the global context method where you have a string and then you use the angle brackets for shared variables. But this allows for greater customizability about what you want inside here. You can, you, you can even do stuff like this, yeah, which is not possible if you use the angle brackets. All right, so now we, we basically um, generate our grid um, and then we start an agent called maze navigator. And the description is you have to navigate to the exit position. These are the moves available to you. You, you must only take one move from the current valid actions and so on. Actually, all these are safeguards because sometimes the LM decides to make a move that is invalid, then you know it wastes time iterating. So you know we we directly just check for valid actions here. All right. Uh, if your action is invalid, choose another action. So you can see in the move here, if it's invalid, we'll just return your move is not valid. So this is to you know help the LM to think better. All right, so um, we put max subtask is 20 because you know it might take more than five moves to get out of the maze. We set the get global context to the get global context function. Set the default to LM is false because we don't want it to hallucinate that it has exited the maze with the LM. All right, and we assign the function move. And let's see what happens. So the start is here and the end is here. So in order to move, I should move down. Okay, very good. I should move down. You can see the start and the end. And it has moved to the end. So this is totally random. I have no control over the, the, the maze, but you can see that you managed to move down and you know, move down twice and then move right. So if your subtask is repeated, you'll just have the bracket too. So this is a safeguard feature so that the LM knows that, hey, I'm doing a repeated action. And we can reply the user also like what the agent has done. And you can see I'm currently at position three, two, which is the exit position. I have moved down and then I move right. So it is like reporting to the user what the agent did. So, you know, we could also do like stuff like if let's say it's too hard to solve it from like this position to the end, 
what we can do is we can like, instead of asking it to solve the whole series of actions, we can shift the start state closer to the end state by asking it to do the run tasks with an updated start state. So what does it mean? Okay, so this is exactly the same as before. Okay, the difference is here. Instead of like navigate from start to end, we ask it to navigate to the endpoint and then we keep, you know, we keep updating the current position. So you notice that it's only doing one move now. So let me just run this. So like over here, the agent says 0, 1 and 2, 4. So the next task will be from 1, 1, navigate to 2, 4. And then you see, this will help to make the agent a bit more focused towards the end goal. Okay, granted, this is actually not like the best method to, to solve planning tasks. I will have to introduce like state space graphs and so on, which will be the extensions of task gen. Right, so very looking forward to do all this exciting things with task gen. Right, so we can see um, the status, it completed the maze. Wow, you see, you managed to navigate this kind of maze. Interesting. And you can see that the agent is at the exit position. And you can see in this reply user, because you know it only has the last task, so it, it won't be able to give you the sequence of moves. Okay, but the benefit of doing something like this to, you know, to update the, the agent every single step is that the planning doesn't need to plan from the start to the end. You can just plan from the intermediate to the end, which is much better for planning. All right, so um, this is a legacy support. I will just cover it anyway. Like in the past, we can allow, you know, shared variables to start with S underscore. So like if you have function, you can straight away put in the function description, this is a shared variables. So like S total is the total count. And you don't, you don't have to define a separate function to do this. Okay, you can also multiply the total with a factor and so on. So this is like a calculator to increment and multiply. So let's see how, how this looks. So first I increment by three and the output C is just completed. And then I multiply by five and completed. And the current total is 15. So we got it right. Okay, but I don't want you to um, focus too much on this because this is um, not that good semantically for the LM. Like if you put an S underscore, sometimes, you know, you might interpret it differently. So the main method that I want you to learn is this. Put the shared variables in an equip function like this. This will make the LM the most robust and the most reliable. And that's it for shared variables. Just take note, shared variables help you to store information that your processes have come up with. And you can simply manipulate your shared variables by putting in the shared variables as your first argument in a function. And then you can use your global context in two ways, but the recommended way is actually to just use a string like this because it's easier. You can customize how you want to add on additional context to your prompt for your agent. And with that, happy playing around with TaskGen, and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.